This video discusses the results you see when you train a neural net with neural tools and then apply it to test or prediction data. The first part of the video uses this auto loan data for illustration. The problem here is a classification problem, where loan outcomes can be timely payments, late payments, or default. There is only a single data set, and 20% of the cases were set aside for testing. The case in row 4 was used for prediction. When a probabilistic net was used for these data, the following results were obtained in a Neural Tools summary worksheet. They show the percentage of bad predictions in both the training data and in the testing data. Also, the probabilistic net provides a probability of incorrect classification for each case. For example, each test case has such a probability, and their mean and standard deviation are about 8.96 and 17.48% respectively. The results also contain a classification matrix of correct and incorrect classifications for both the training and the testing data. For example, in the testing data, the middle row indicates that there were 16 late payments, of which 14 were classified correctly and two were incorrectly classified as timely payments. In addition, the results for a probabilistic net include a histogram of the probabilities of incorrect classifications for training and for testing. Here are the results for testing. As you can see, most of the probabilities are very small, but a few are quite large. How could this happen? Suppose a case that doesn't fit the pattern has a late payments value. The probabilities of the three outcomes for this case might be 90% for timely payments, 9% for late payments, and 1% for default. Then the prediction would be timely payment, because it has the highest probability, but the probability of incorrect classification would be 90% plus 1% or 91%, so they can be high. In the training dialog box, you can also check the Calculate Variable Impacts option. You usually do this for screening purposes, to identify independent variables that aren't really helping in the predictions. If you check this option, the results include a list of percentages, as shown here, and a corresponding chart. You might consider dropping variables with low percentages and perhaps looking for better independent variables to replace them. The results are also shown in the data worksheet. For each test case, you see the classification and the probability that it is correct. In addition, you see the probability of an incorrect classification and whether it is in fact incorrect. Only the first two pieces of information are shown for the predict case, because its actual classification is unknown. If you use an MLF net for classification, you get similar results. However, MLF nets do not provide probabilities of misclassifications. The results are also similar when the dependent variable is numeric, as illustrated in this abalone age dataset. In this example, the training data and testing data are separate, and the results are shown only for the testing data. Using a generalized regression net, the following results were obtained. Now each prediction has an absolute error, and the usual statistical measures of prediction errors, or residuals, are reported, both in numerical and graphical form. several scatter plots as well. Note that a prediction is labeled bad if its absolute percentage difference from the actual value is beyond the tolerance shown, in this case 30%. This 30% is a setting that can be changed in the Neural Tools Application Settings dialog box. As with classifications, 
The predictions are also placed in the same worksheet as the data, in this case the testing data. Finally, if the dependent variable is numeric, you can choose the regression option, which is illustrated with this housing price data set. It was trained with a GRN net, but the regression option was also checked. The results include a comparison between the linear predictor from regression and the neural net. The results also list the usual regression coefficients. Note that a 0, 1 variable was automatically used for the categorical lakeside variable, with 1 corresponding to no.